talk about sine, cosine, tangent, and their reciprocal functions. Just a short and sweet. Let's say I want to find the cosine of that angle. And let's say that's 45 degrees. Now, in radian land, 45 degrees is pi over 4. OK? So let's envision what this looks like on our unit circle. Cosine, of course, is my x value over my hypotenuse. And let's just call that 1. Say it's a unit circle. Does that look like a 1? OK? So if that's 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians, I know that um, there's a certain relationship between my sides and the hypotenuse. And of course, this is something that we just have to either know or memorize. So my cosine is going to be the adjacent, or the x, over my hypotenuse. My sine is also going to be square root of 2 over 2, because it is the y value over the 1. And my tangent of pi over 4 radians is the y over the x, which is 1. So let's just do our reciprocal. So the reciprocal of cosine, remember, is the secant. So if I want to find the secant of pi over 4, it's the reciprocal. Now, Sure, you could write this, but why make more work for yourself, right? Reciprocal means whoop, you're flipping it. So flipping this guy is 2 over the square root of 2. You're done. I mean, if you wanted to rationalize that denominator, you could. Usually in calculus, we don't have to worry about such trivial matches. All right, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. If I want to find the cosecant of pi over 4, again, that's flipped. If I want to find the reciprocal of tan, that's cotan. That's a nice easy one. Right? So you can either envision your unit circle to help you do this. You can actually draw a special triangle to help you do this. But keep in mind when you're finding a cosine or a sine or a cosecant, you're looking for the ratio of sides. The ratio of sides. You're actually looking at your triangle and finding the ratio between the specified sides. Let's do one more. Um, let's work with pi over 6. Okay? So pi over 6. Whoops, that's not very pi over 60. He is around there. Pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees. Pi over 6. All right, 30, 60, 90 triangle. I can call that 1 if I'm in my unit circle. And I know from what I know from geometry that opposite the 30 degree, that's half of the hypotenuse, opposite the 60 degree is going to be half times square root of 3. So if I want to find all of mine, I'm going to call that cosine of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is just radian language for 30 degrees. The cosine, of course, is my x value over the hypotenuse. So that's the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 6. The ratio of the sides of the opposite over the hypotenuse, the y value over my hypotenuse. Tan is my y value over my x value. Now, 1 half divided by, are you still, are you getting this way down here? I got it. Okay. Now, that's awkward. I don't want to leave a fraction in a fraction. You're really dividing fractions. You're multiplying by the reciprocal. What I like doing is just multiplying the denominator and the numerator by a fancy form of 1 that turns the denominator into a 1. So that's going to give me boink, boink, 1 over the square root of 3. That would be the tangent of my 30 degrees, or the tangent of pi over 6. Make sense? 
And again, your reciprocal functions, reciprocal of cosine is secant. So the secant of pi over 6 is just 2 over the square root of 3. Cosecant of pi over 6, 2 over 1. And the reciprocal of tan is fruit. You like the sound effects? Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's good. this would happen exactly in all the other quadrants with just different positives or negatives. Cosine and sine are both positive in this first quadrant because x associated with cosine and y associated with sine are positive. Over in this second quadrant, of course, your cosines will be negative since x is negative, sine will be positive. In this third quadrant, both the x and the y are negative, so both your cosines and your sines will be negative. In this fourth quadrant, your cosine, you're back in positive land, so all your cosines of your rotations in this quadrant will be positive, sines negative. But again, you can use your unit circle to help you. The thing I want you to always remember is when you're finding the cosine or the sine or the secant, you're looking for a ratio of sides in a triangle. From a rotation. And, you know, I could make this huge. I could make this circle enormous. It doesn't have to be a unit circle. And I would get the same answer, right? How long do you want that hypotenuse to be, Mr. Haas? Three miles. Three miles. Okay, so if that's still my 30 degrees, that three miles, so opposite the 30 degrees would be half of that. 1.5 miles. The opposite to 60 degrees would be 1.5 times the square root of 3 miles. That relationship between sides is the same. So the cosine of pi over 6, or 30 degrees, square root of 3 over 2, let's see if that would be the same thing. Cosine is 1.5 square root of 3 over 3. Yeah, that simplifies to the same thing. So you're just finding a ratio of sides whenever you're doing this. Always remember that.